Right, if you're serious about going faster on the bike, then it's likely at some point you have contemplated upgrading from your standard road helmet, as I'm wearing here, to either an aero road helmet or even a time trial helmet. Or maybe you've just simply seen people wearing these kind of helmets and wondered why. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be tearing apart and weighing up the pros and cons of each of these helmets and how they may benefit each rider. Oh, and don't worry, I will be putting them up against each other in a little versus two. Now you may be thinking, really, what difference can a helmet make? Well, you know the theory, you make a small gain in everything and all those small gains can add up to become a winning margin. It's all about the aggregation of marginal gains. And that's exactly what we've got going on here, really. It is marginal gains. It's commonly thought that around 20% of our overall drag when cycling comes from the bike itself, and the remaining 80% comes from us, the rider. And given that our head is essentially breaking the wind, well, the helmet plays a very important role then. So let's take a look at the options. So firstly, we've got a standard road helmet, like this one I'm wearing here, which is the Trenta from Met. It's got loads of air vents, they're very well ventilated, but its primary function is protection and comfort. And they tend to be pretty light. This one is incredibly light, around 250 grams. Whereas an aero road helmet is designed for speed. And here I've got the brand new Manta from Met. It's still obviously incredibly protective and still very much a road helmet with similar shaping. But you'll notice there's far fewer air vents as it's trying obviously to be more aerodynamic and they can weigh in a little bit more, although this one is also incredibly light at just 250 grams. And then we have the TT helmet, which is something quite different again. Now, like the Aero Road helmet, it is designed for speed, but the shape is quite different. Now, typically we see this teardrop-like shape effect with the idea that the tail kind of fills that void behind the rider's head and between the back, therefore sort of smoothing out that airflow and therefore reducing drag. Now, the tails can vary in length, and I'll explain a little bit why on that later on, but you probably have noticed there's even less air vents yet again. And also they can be a little bit heavier. This one is around 350 to 400 grams, which is no surprise really. Now, before I delve into these helmets any further, let's get some scores on the door in classic GTN fashion with a little backyard TT. And honestly, I'm intrigued to see if we actually see much difference here at all. Now, I've picked out a relatively short course, but hopefully enough that we can pull some data from. It's three kilometers long and nice and flat. Now, unlike usual, I'm actually going to hold the same speed for each of these runs, 40 kilometers an hour, and see what power that gives me, rather than the other way around as we usually do. That way, each helmet is used in the same conditions, the same speed, the same wind flow, etc., etc. So first off, let's give it a go with the standard road helmet. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, second run, donning the Aero Road helmet now. Let's do this. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, final run with the TT helmet. Let's do this. Three, two, one, let's go. Actually, I was a bit worried we weren't going to have much to talk about here, but got some pretty good results for you here. So first off, 
All those runs were literally within a couple of seconds of each other, which is good news because that's the idea. I was traveling at the same speed, so that's good. Now for the road helmet, just the standard road helmet, I average 254 watts. For the aero road helmet, 249. And then for the TT helmet, 245. So that's a nine watt saving from the standard road helmet up to the TT helmet, which I'm quite pleased with because that's actually kind of in line and follow suit with a lot of the research that I found out there. So we had a significant jump up from the standard road helmet to the aero road helmet, and then a slightly smaller jump up again from the aero road helmet to the TT helmet. And what I do know from the very clever sciencey people out there is that the faster we go, the more these aerodynamic and marginal gains come into play. So there we go. The TT helmet is faster. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Whoa, Mark, try it. Well, mate, I can't believe you're making me do this. Yeah, okay, aerodynamics and speed isn't simply all it's about, is it, really? There is more to it than that. So let's go grab a coffee, and I'll explain a little bit more about why these other helmets may be a good option. Okay, okay, now they do of course all have their own benefits, but let's start with probably the obvious thing. Which would you rather turn up wearing to a group ride or be seen wearing while cycling around your local lanes? It's probably going to be one of these two as opposed to this one. It's not to say this isn't a good helmet or a good choice. I personally think it's a very cool helmet, but it is a bit serious, isn't it? Now, let's take a look firstly at the standard road helmet. Now this is a great all-rounder and for that reason a very popular choice. It's very well ventilated so if you're working hard or it's a hot day it's going to keep your head nice and cool and therefore keep you cool as well. And it's almost designed so that you don't even realize it's on your head. It's very lightweight, it's breathable and it's very comfortable. And for that reason this is a very popular choice from, from my own perspective for training but also if I was to go racing or training in a hot or hilly environment it'd probably be my choice there too. The Aero Road helmet, on the other hand, is a great in-between option and is also becoming increasingly popular. Now, the bonus of this is you, you can wear this any day of the week and people wouldn't necessarily notice, yet you are gaining from some of those aerodynamic benefits that we saw just before. And that, for that reason, that's why you see a lot of the pro cyclists wearing this kind of helmet on those flatter stages for those aerodynamic gains. Now, as you can see, and as I mentioned earlier, they are obviously less ventilated than the standard aero road helmet. But then of course, oddly, that does actually make it a good option also for the colder and winter rides when you want to keep your head warm. And then, the TT helmet. Well, this is, of course, as we've seen, the fastest option for the right course for the right rider. Now, let's be honest, this isn't your everyday helmet kind of option. You're probably going to have this in addition to one of these and saving this for race day. Now, I saw a nine watt saving from one end of the spectrum to the other today, and then four watts from the Aero Road helmet up to the TT helmet. But that is going to vary from one person to the other, depending on the position that they can get into, they can hold, but also their body shape potentially too. Or alternatively, you could drop down to an air road helmet. And actually, interestingly, a lot of people don't see a huge difference between the benefits from an air road helmet to a TT helmet because of their position. And actually, also interestingly, a lot of pro athletes opt to wear something like an air road helmet for hotter events like Kona because whilst it does have less ventilation than a standard road helmet, it tends to have a little bit more than a TT helmet. So it just helps to keep them cool. And if you're not gaining much from wearing a TT helmet, well, it's a no-brainer really, isn't it? Well, there's been a lot to cover today. So please, please, if you have any more questions, drop them in the comments section down below. I'd love to help out and get back to you on those. And yeah, don't forget to follow us over on social media and check out some of our other videos. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a like and give us a subscribe just down below.